guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Tita Lavinia of Tita's of Pageantry and for this episode, we're going to talk about my dark horses at this edition of Miss Universe Philippines. So please make sure you stick around, please subscribe to the channel as well as hit that bell notification button for your weekly pageant fix. Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. I know a lot of you are anxious to find out more news about Miss Universe Philippines. I will get to that later on. But let me do um, thank a few people first. I first want to thank my existing patrons. You know who you are. I also, um, I also want to thank you guys because I know this is now a discussion in pageantry. Um, you know, having our details out there so you guys could send in your love, your donation, or whatever. I'm not going to go into that rabbit hole because there are two parties thinking if that's even ethical i'm just saying that as a content creator i put out my details out there even before i got monetized for this so for those of you who wish to send me donations who wish to send me funds my details are still listed in the description box both paypal as well as gcash but for the sake of transparency it doesn't all go to my milk tea fund um of course it does but i'm just saying that i am now in a position to give back a little amount to those who are in need, either um, those who need something for school or maybe donations for something really tragic or, you know, someone who got sick. But my priority really is to allot a bit of that fund for um, animal welfare. So I have partnered, guys, with um, smaller animal welfare groups as well as individual rescuers. And I'm happy to announce that as of last week, um, the funds that you sent me went towards the um, transportation of some kittens to their new forever home. So, yeah, thank you so much for that, guys. And if you want to continue helping me out, help others out um, uh, in the animal welfare community, please um, do not hesitate to do so. So, there you go. Now, I'm going to address a little bit on what happened in my previous episode because I did get mi mixed reactions on that. And it's just really unfortunate because I pride myself in presenting you with um, videos that may seem naughty but are well-researched and, you know, professionally presented. So when I do get um, comments saying that I am... Uh, reduced to nothing more than a cheese miss monger, uh, I feel the need to explain because as a pageant fan, as a pageant analyst, as a pageant enthusiast, as a pageant admin, I also moonlight as a pageant chronicler and writer. I feel like I am doing you a disservice or I will be doing you a disservice if I don't present you with things that are not um, happening around pageantry, things that are that people are too polite to even discuss. So what I'm just saying is that when I gave you that um, video the last time chronicling where the girls are and how they were running around provinces and how their buses were turned away, some of you felt that I was just highlighting something that was negative it's not just that guys um a lot of you did not believe it a lot of you felt that i was just making it up to bring down the organization it's not that i think a lot of people just zero in on the negativity that i exude when i talk about miss universe philippines so i totally get you on that i mean i'm not gonna even lie i am really <laughs> monitoring Miss Universe Philippines and I feel like this is also because I'm invested um, Miss Universe is my favorite pageant out of all the pageants out there so I want to know how they will pick the winners I want to know where they are I want to know what the venue will be so these are little things that I feel are just normal to talk about when you have a national pageant going on at this time so when Rappler posted this article on what actually happened at the Pangasinan um, checkpoint. Hala, dyan sa lalawigan ng Pangasinan, abay, controversial doon, hindi raw pinatuloy doon yung beauty pageant, itong uh, Miss Universe uh, Philippines, yung mga uh, kandidata. Bakit kaya? May detalye at follow up dito ang Bombo Radio Dagupan. Nilinaw ng Provincial Tourism Office ang hindi pagkakatuloy ng pre-pageant activity ng Miss Universe Philippines 2021 sa lalawigan naman ng Pangasinana. Ayon kay Provincial Tourism Officer Malu Edwayan ay sumusunod lamang sila sa Provincial IATF. I felt relieved that 
apart from the screenshots that I have, that there is actually proof that this happened. So not that I'm happy about it. I'm just saying that moving forward, if indeed they were able to secure a venue, which I know they have, but they haven't officially announced this yet. I guess my only thing is that maybe we could have like this open communication thing going on because as of now, September 19, um, by morning, the ladies will undergo um, numerous shoots for the preliminaries, which will air on the 21st as well as the 23rd. So based on what everybody has been saying from the inside, the preliminaries for the national costume as well as the preliminaries for um, evening gown and swimsuit as well as the interview will all take place hopefully today September 19 so let's see um, again <laughs> I am not plotting the demise of Miss Universe Philippines I am as curious as you are as to how they will um, stage this and if it were just me I would love for them to just get this one done and over with so there you go now I'm gonna talk about the dark horses for this edition even if it's a little difficult to do so because we don't really have a lot of activities to base it from. Usually when we have um, pre-pageant activities, you could really pretty much gauge who gets to be on top, either because they look fabulous or because they have a lot of output. This time around, the outputs of the girls are very limited, so you know there is some form of control whenever they would release their information. So a lot of them really go to TikTok with, you know, very short videos, and then a lot of them go into OOTD shots. So it's a little difficult to really gauge who's doing really well, but nevertheless, we can and we will. So I am going to start with this dark horse for you, I feel that she is someone who still needs more polishing. I feel like this is someone who looks the part already. She does have a smaller but solid fan base. A lot of people talk about her whenever there are challenges because, you know, she's really hard to miss. I'm talking about Angeles Pampanga's Mirjan Hipolito. Now, Merge, as she is known, is 24 years old. She is 5'8", and based on the materials that she has been putting out, she has been doing a lot of tributes to the former queens like Janine Tugonon. Um, I think that this is the only hurdle that she has to really overcome. Mirian already has the calm skills. Um, she has the experience. She's tall. She looks like a model. She looks like a beauty queen. But like what I mentioned before, with all of these tribute shots, I also feel like part of her is like dwelling in the past. And it would be nice to push her forward to 2021. Um, in terms of how she is when she conducts herself during interviews, we have yet to find out because, again, there is still very little... Um, interaction for us to base this from as some of the ladies aren't really posting a lot of materials out there um, speaking or engaging with their fans so yeah we'll see next is someone I am personally drawn to now it's a little sad because I feel like I'm the only one who has been giving her the spotlight and I am still waiting for my other admins um, admin friends to really notice this and I'm talking about Reina Mercedes Isabella's Jan Luis Abejero Jan Luis she is 26 years old she is 5'8 I have yet to really hear her, so maybe this is where we're going to have the tables turned, her calm skills, but I look at her, she seems so polished, she seems so elegant, she photographs tall, I like her bone structure, um, she does have that delicate Ning Sofida sophistication from Thailand, if you remember her from 2018. But I also like that her features are very Filipina as well, um, and that they're not chiseled perfect there are rounded parts of her features which i feel is very distinctly filipina and i like that she does have a quiet grace to her whenever um i see a lot of her ootds and she doesn't really have to do a lot of booty touching she doesn't really have to show a lot of skin but you know i feel like there's potential there have we tapped it Maybe not yet. Maybe time is running out also, but I hope that some people will get to really recognize her. 
Next, I want to talk about Simone Nadine Bornelia. She is only 18 years old and she stands, if I'm not mistaken, around 5'4". She does photograph tall and she does photographs. I mean, Simone is prepared. And I like that she's prepared because her preparation seems to be a family thing. Everyone in her family and her circles, they're very supportive. And I feel like this is because they have been grooming Nadine at a very young age. And it's really nice because they did not push Nadine into doing this. It seems that Nadine also wants to do this. And I say this because, again, I've mentioned this one before. I covered several events for her dads. Um, her dads are also active in the male pageantry scene. So I know that Nadine, or yeah, Simone, Simone Nadine, um, I know that she's very involved. I know that whenever we cover these events, she's always there. She's always very gracious. So I know that whatever image it is that she's putting out there, that's the real her. At a very young age, she's already so sophisticated. She already has, you know, this elegance thing going on um there, there's a delicate balance to you know how she presents herself in photos and in photos she has a lot of them um and i'm glad that she seems to be enjoying this journey uh Next, I want to give a shout out to Pasig City's Princess Krista Singh. She is 26 years old and I initially thought that she was a lot taller, but when I asked her what her height was, she said 5'5". Five five. Now, this is a really good sign because even if she isn't considered the tallest in the batch, I feel like within just a couple of days, she was able to really elevate her brand. Now, before, um, during the challenges, you would wait for Krista to give you the craziest production number. With her caramel blonde hair, long legs, striking features. But a few days ago, she um, messaged me and said, Tita, I dyed my hair. I toned it down. So for me, this is someone who listens. This is someone who really works hard in experimenting, not being afraid to fail at one thing and then, you know, succeed in another because her outputs are hit or miss. But it doesn't matter because what I love about her is the personality. It just really shines. Whenever you see her in photographs, you see her in videos, she's like a friend you want to have wine with, you want to make chica chica with. So she does have that effervescent um you know, characteristic going on, and she's fun and spunky. Now, these days, um, I know that she has slimmed down too, because if you check out her social media platforms from last year, I think there definitely is a physical change, and it's a good one, because for me, um, it signals someone who is just prepared to battle it out for Miss Universe Philippines. And then looking at her materials now and how she presents herself, she looks really neat. She looks really polished. Um, her strong features are still there, but, you know, it's not screaming. I like the more toned down look. I wish that she would continue with this path. And because she's just so bubbly, she's so fun, I hope that translates to her interviews as well. Next on my list is someone who gained momentum just recently. I'm talking about Jane Nicole Mignano of Romblon. Now, this cutie, you may think that she's just a super cute, pretty face, but gosh, just yesterday, I was surprised when I posted her because she seemed like she was going to reach the door. I mean, she looked that tall. So I asked her today, Be, what's your height? And she said, Tita, I'm 5'9". And I was like, what? I didn't know that. So I was really happy because Jane is um, a pageant girl. She already won several pageants in the past. There was one um, promising pageant, Miss Hannah International Philippines, that she won. Um, we thought that was going to go on, but unfortunately it didn't. But, you know, that signaled her debut in pageantry so we're talking about the pageant girl here and what's nice about pageant girls really apart from the stigma that they're always so pageant patty what's nice about pageant girls is that they're very disciplined they know what is expected of them and they understand that there is a need for them to transform and transform she did my only issue is that maybe the transformation just seemed a little abrupt because jane is only 21 years old and although she looks fabulous in all of her tall looking clothes 
I feel like she should really embrace her youth, just like my advice to Kisses, because these days she does have a tendency to fix herself up and really glam herself up. So maybe just tone it down and maybe, you know, just really look your age because that's your ace card. Next on my list, I think when we talk about dark horses in this edition, the, the name that always comes up now is... Maria Corazon Abalos, of course, of Mandaluyong City, or Corinne Abalos. Corinne is 23 years old. She is 5'5", but she does not photograph 5'5", which is really very promising. Now, I feel like she is a dark horse in this competition because even if she has a recognizable name, she's not really banking on it. Um, and I think also that's one of the small issues that I have. When we talk about Corinne Abalos... We talk about her beautiful photos, we talk about her in motion, but we never really get to talk about her as someone you could sit down and have a conversation with. So it's a little different when you have something pre-taped. It's also different when you get to see someone interact, and I have yet to see her interact. Um, or maybe I haven't been watching other <laughs> interviews, but it would be nice to have more of that maybe on her social media feed because right now I feel that even if we have talked about her sense of style, her bone structure, her amazing shoulders, we haven't really talked about how she is in conversations, like how warm she is or how informative and engaging she is. So, you know, this is the only um, concern I have. But you know what? If she can charm the judges tomorrow at um, preliminary interviews, then I have no doubt she's going to fare well in this competition. And of course, my last dark horse for the list is someone who could potentially bring everyone down because I don't know she's been so consistent lately I'm talking about Manila's Jasmine Umali who is 25 years old and stands 5'9 this one is going head to head with Victoria Vincent in terms of sense of style um there is nothing pageant patty about her packaging, about the way she markets herself and presents herself. Now, maybe that could also be an issue because right now, even with um, all of the materials that she's been putting out there and she has been very diligent, guys, I feel like there is also a need for her to be more with the masses and to really um, communicate because in if you notice, in all of these um, dark horses, we're missing the communications factor. We're missing the fact that they are producing a lot of videos, they are producing a lot of photos, but there's just really very little material out there for us to judge um, how they are overall because that part of the competition or that aspect, communication skills, likability, engagement skills, we're still not seeing it. So the good thing with Jasmine is that at least she's doing something. She's doing a lot of these TikTok videos. And, you know, when you put your TikTok videos out there, you get a lot of engagement and you get um, a fan base who will look for you because you look glamorous, but at the same time, you're quirky, like everyone else who, you know, just wants to go dancing on TikTok. So with Jasmine, she has the DNA <laughs> First of all, I think a lot of people are talking about the fabulous parents and the fabulous dad. And um, she has the class factor. Um, and I also like the fact that she is different because she is more on the oriental looking side. And maybe we need that because like we have all been saying, um, we have seen some of the candidates for Miss Universe this year, led, of course, by Paraguay with um, Nadia Ferreira. So I think this is the benchmark. We need to have a beauty who could go head-to-head -head with that or maybe someone who could go the opposite direction. So if you have someone oriental-looking who's tall, who's striking, maybe Jasmine is it. And it may not be a good idea for the organization to gamble on a dark horse or someone totally unknown, which I call a sleeper. But at the same time, I feel that if there is a space to really move forward the same way Rabia charged the competition then it's free for all. So there you go, guys. I will be seeing you very soon right after the prelims. So for now, this is our update. And I don't know if you'll agree, but I will, of course, see you very soon. Goodbye.